Hi, it's Trev, Body Mechanic, and today's discussion we're looking at how much is enough to eat. I'm going to look at vegetables, fruits and grains. Okay. Now vegetables, they contribute loads of important carbohydrates to your diet. Vegetables, they're a great source of vitamin C, beta carotene, which is a plant form of vitamin A. Potassium, magnesium and many other vitamins and minerals. Now vegetables in general offer more nutritional value than fruits. So if you don't consume much fruit, you need to be consuming more veg. So how much is enough? Well, the recommended intake is for at least two and a half cups of veg, which is about 400 grams per day. Now if you're a busy person and rarely eat that much veg in a week, you need to try and consume that amount in one sitting, a big pile of veg rather than spread it out. And if you're anything like me, I tend to put something like sweet chilli on it because it makes it that bit more palatable. So what are my top choices then? Well, any veg is good for you, but try for dark colourful veg as these tend to have the most nutritional value uh, than paler ones. Now I'm not saying paler ones are not good for you because they are. I'm just saying they aren't as nutritionally packed as the dark ones. Fresh from the garden are best and the cheapest, but not many grow their own veg these days. It's just too labour intensive and just too easily bought from the shops. In today's busy society, we don't just have the time, so you need to shop more often and get fresh from the supermarket. So the next best option is frozen. As there's very little nutritional value destroyed from freezing, Canned is also a good uh, option, but remember they use salt or sodium to preserve the veg. So rinse them off really well with fresh water to try and reduce the salt. Now don't overcook them either, as this destroys the nutrient value. Just cook them till they're tender, <coughs> excuse me, and start to soften a bit. If they still have a bit of crunch, even better. Particularly throughout now. <clears throat> now fruits add to a strong carbohydrate diet needed for the active person. Fruits are also rich in fibre, potassium and many other vitamins, especially vitamin C. These nutrients are good for improved healing and the aid in recovery after exercise and can help to reduce the risk of cancer, high blood pressure and constipation. So how much is enough? We are looking to consume around one or two pieces of standard fruit. If you eat fruit, or you don't eat much fruit I should say, I recommend that you try to put it into your breakfast. Chop banana on your cornflakes for instance, or even blend them to make a smoothie. Try to put some fruit in as a snack or as a dessert after your meal. This is a great way to ensure you get your requirements and the benefits they give. So what's my top choices? Uh, to get your vitamin C and potassium well they come from oranges, grapefruits, clementines and tangerines if peeling is an issue for you try to just drink its juice although you don't get all the fibre that way and you actually consume way more than you would if you were to eat them that means loads more simple sugars which is not good so limit the amount you actually drink now bananas are low fat high potassium fruit and are perfect for a busy person. Dried fruits are convenient to munch on, they are easily portable and still rich in potassium and carbohydrates, so a good alternative when you're on the go. So let's look at grains. Now they are the foundation of a high performance diet and they come from wholesome breads, cereals and other grain foods as they are full of energy required to fuel workouts. Grains that are unrefined so in the natural condition or lightly processed are excellent sources of carbohydrates, fibre and vitamin B. Now they fuel workouts, they give muscles the energy they require and help prevent muscle fatigue. They reduce constipation as well if they are rich in fibre. However, you need to be careful. If you eat too much carbohydrate, your body only uses so much. So it turns some into glycogen and stores it within your muscles and liver. The rest, well, will be converted to fat cells, which means it has just be, been made to be more economical when you burn it. It means you are getting fat, granted with a healthier fat source, but nevertheless fat, and it's much harder to remove. 
So how much is enough? Well, to ensure you get enough carbohydrates to fuel your daily activities, including your workouts, you need to ensure carbohydrates form the foundation of your meal. This equates to about 200 calories per meal. Um, although an active person could be consuming twice, even three times as much as that. To put that into context, this could be two slices of bread, a cup of rice, one bowl of cereal. So top choices would include whole grain cereals like shredded wheat, Cheerios, but the box needs to say whole grain on the list of ingredients. Oatmeal, this helps to lower cholesterol and protect against heart disease. It's also great as a pre-exercise snack as the carbohydrates are slow to digest, so give a slow sustained release of energy. Try and pick up the dark breads, so step, say brown, uh, as these have unrefined flour and therefore have much greater nutrient value. Now these are not all the carbohydrate foods, but we'll look at them later, okay, in some future videos. So just check out my next video, which will be looking at dairy products and protein. Okay, catch you later.